Mayhem erupted in Ghana's parliament on Thursday after a ruling party lawmaker tried to seize the ballot box during the vote for Speaker. The ensuing clash, which took place a day after supporters of US President Donald Trump stormed the Capitol in Washington, lasted several hours until the army moved in. After order was resumed, the legislature narrowly chose a candidate from opposition ranks, a first in Ghana's nearly 63-year post-independence history. The new parliament is split down the middle between President Akufu Addo's new patriotic party and the opposing National Democratic Congress, posing the risk of gridlock on tackling Ghana's problems. Akufo Addo was sworn in for a second term later in the day after narrowly winning re-election in the December 7th vote. The opposition rejected the result. He made no reference in his speech to the unrest that took place earlier. I cannot therefore take this honour and privilege bestowed on my mother's self lightly. And I thank Almighty God and the Ghanaian people, who by an emphatic margin renewed my mandate in office for four more years. Uganda is preparing for tense elections in January that will most likely see President Yoweri Museveni re-elected for a sixth term. The 76-year-old has been in power since 1986. Candidates have been arrested, rallies banned, and dozens of protesters killed in the chaotic run-up to the vote. Police dragged main opposition candidate Bobby Wine from his car on Thursday as he spoke to journalists in an online briefing while campaigning. Go oh, for a few minutes and you're able to, to read As a motion. matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I would really, really... Uh, now I'm being arrested. As you can see, I'm Please. being arrested. Who is the presidential candidate? But, but. Wine, a former pop star whose real name is Robert Kayagulani, has filed a complaint against Museveni at the International Criminal Court for Crimes Against Humanity. He's been arrested countless times and sent his family to the United States for safety. But commentators and voters alike already know the election outcome. We know that if Bobby Wine will not win, even if they, we vote, we used to vote, but we will not win. Wine himself told AFP in an interview that his participation in the election was strategic. Coming out to vote, this is going to be more or less a protest vote, in my view, you know. And protesting comes in voting, and protesting comes also in demonstration, for as long as it is within the acceptable legal confines. Millions of Kenyan pupils returned to school on Monday for the first time since classes were dismissed 10 months earlier due to the coronavirus pandemic. Kenya shut schools in March 2020 and partially reopened to select classes in October. But this caused a spike in COVID-19 cases, with pupils and teachers falling ill, with at least one school principal dying. There were mixed feelings as children returned to school this time round. With me as a parent, I'm pleased that the, children's are, the children are back in school because we were really worried about the pandemic. We really wished for our kids to be back in school. And at the moment, we are very happy that they, our kids are back in school. Students in Kasumu County, close to the overflowing Lake Victoria, had to take boats to school, only to find waterlogged classrooms and no teachers on site. Kenya has had almost 97,000 cases of coronavirus and more than 1,600 deaths since the start of the outbreak. We stayed with my child for a very long time, like nine months. There have been lots of challenges because I am a young parent who has to struggle for work and the mum also has to hustle, so we are forced to leave him at home. But now that the schools are open, it's better. We are grateful and we pray for them to be safe because the virus is real. Authorities have extended a 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. curfew until the 12th of March.
and Senegalese young people protesting against a coronavirus curfew clashed with security forces overnight on Wednesday in the capital, Dakar. They burnt tyres and set up roadblocks as police fired tear gas. The curfew is not going to make the virus go away. Gatherings continue to take place in buses and markets during the day. It's an ineffective measure. President Macky Sall called a state of emergency on Wednesday as he imposed a curfew from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. in Dhaka and one other region of the West African country. Dhaka and the Ties region account for nearly 90% of COVID-19 infections, according to health authorities. Many of us work at night. We earn our money day by day, and now we are prevented from working at night. Deliveries work better at night in Dakar. During the day, it's not easy. The pandemic had abated in Senegal before a second wave struck. Official figures are still comparatively low, with 20,000 cases and 433 deaths. But the outbreak has put considerable strain on the country's healthcare system.